How much do you really know about the Spawn Ranch raid? What if I told you that it was only a film? What's the reason the warrant was the wrong date? They basically tell us that they were going after a car theft ring and they got them, but the warrant was dated wrong, so they had to let them go. That's what they tell you. If we look back on all the facts of this stuff and we punch in Google, we Google now, Spawn Ranch Raid, all these pictures pop up, all these people, all these arrests. The only thing you can find is one article in a newspaper that's about this big. That's right there, actually. And it mentions things like, oh, we're going for a car theft ring. When we get there, um, the guy's afraid of people, which doesn't make any sense. First off, why is there only a little tiny article there? And you have no picture with it. There's no pictures with this thing at all. None. But when we look back on history now and Google in Spawn Ranch Ray, there's like a million pictures of this. Where'd all those pictures come from? They came from the movie. It was basically it was basically designed like this. They were investigating this ranch for a whole year, basically, what I can see of the notes of the police department and the sheriff's department's records. They were investigating this ranch. They were doing surveillance, they were watching them from telephone poles, they were watching them from all over the place. They had people climbing through the weeds looking at them. They had people flying over looking at them. What you've got to understand about the Manson family a bit, and it is a bit political. People say, no, Manson family is not political. Well, it is in this part of it. Um, we have to understand the times. It was 1969, and it was in July and August. Okay, 1968, the presidential candidate from California was in Orange County and he was touting this. He was touting the fact that the crime was rising at nine times the rate of the population. So it was nine times worse than it was. you know. And he was going to do something about crime if he was elected. Well, now Nixon's elected. He's from California and he's the government, the federal government's now injecting all this money into law enforcement. Nixon all he ran on was fight crime, be tough on crime, fight down on crime, and we're not going to do this alone at the federal government. We want your hand in it. We want you to help us. Um, so this whole Spawn ranch, ranch raid is playing into that. The government's injecting a lot of funds into now fighting a lot of crime. And they're looking for locations. They're all over the place. It's like a movie. It's like a movie crew almost. These cops are looking for locations. They find any kind of um, activity going on. You know, like it was going on at Spawn Ranch. It was a perfect location for all this stuff. There was all kinds of activity going on. There was bikers in and out of this place. There was runaway kids going in and out of this place. They had it under surveillance for a whole year. They made like seven arrests there. They got delinquency of a minor to rape to fuck. And they had LSD over there that they caught people with. So they knew that this was a perfect location to set up this movie that they had going also, on in these sheriff's notes. It didn't really mention Manson all that much. He wasn't the main character in these notes. Basically, the biker gang was the main character in these notes. And when they went to catch this car bust ring, it was the bikers they were looking for. The bikers were the ones that were cutting up the cars and making them into dune buggies. All the Manson family was doing was causing trouble. The bikers were the ones that were into this car theft shit. It wasn't the Manson family. You're confused there. And they didn't, and the cops weren't looking at the Manson family like they were car thieves. They stole a few cars. They did everything illegal, but they weren't the ones that they were looking for. It was these bikers that they were concentrating on. That's what made this location so great. They had these bikers. They also had Black Panthers showing up to the ranch. Just like Manson thought, there were Black Panthers at Spawn Ranch doing surveillance as well. They caught the cops actually caught them in their surveillance. They caught a couple cars of these guys coming into the ranch, taking pictures of it. Manson said they were. He said the Black Panthers were over at the ranch that were coming for him, but it wasn't for him. It wasn't because he shot lots of Papa. Dead. No, it was all because there was a fight in Venice Beach, a big brawl. Um, and it happened between Black Panthers and Straight Satans and one of the straight Satans bit off the ear 
of a Black Panther. And other political fact that plays into this Manson thing and the reason that they're over at this ranch in the first place. It wasn't, uh, the car theft thing, it was just a cover. It was just added in, actually, because this was a movie. Don't forget, this was a movie they're planning here. They weren't planning on busting anybody, they were planning on making a movie here. The, the So they got car theft going on, they got bikers going on, now they got Black Panthers going on, that's perfect, because that was probably their main target anyway. And they got a guy, this guy who's picking up young girls hitchhiking all the time. That's how they referred to Manson. He was this creepy little guy who's picking up hitchhikers and bringing them back, girl hitchhikers and bringing them back to the ranch. Probably all thought they were underage, probably uh, you know, contributing to the delinquency of the minors of these girls, but that's all. And they knew he was a common criminal too, if they just looked at the records. But um, they just looked at him as this creepy little guy that picked up hitchhikers off the side of the road. They were looking at bikers, they were looking at Black Panthers, they were looking at everybody else over at this ranch besides Manson. They've just been injected a lot of money from the federal government, now the government's given them a ton of money. It's coming into California, the state that the president lived in, that's his state, and now his state's gonna show him, hey, we're in, this is what we're investing this money in. They got a brand new helicopter they listed on there. They listed in things that they obtained in 1969, one of them was a helicopter. Probably the first place they used it at was right here at Spawn Ranch. Not probably, it was the first place they used it at, right here at Spawn Ranch. And it was one of those things that was for the movie. The movie, this was a training film. It was set up as a training film for all this money that was now injected into California for crime. And, man, and, and Nixon, he hated hippies. If there, if, there, if there was one thing that, Man, uh, that Manson, Manson, Nixon, Nixon, Manson, Manson, Nixon, um, if there was one thing that Nixon hated more than hippies, it was marijuana. He said that. He said that in his speeches too. You know, elect me. I'll get rid of all this crime shit. And one of the first things that Nixon did when he came into office in 1969 through the tax code, a sneaky way of doing it, but through the tax code he made it so that you had to get a tax now to buy a marijuana cigarette. And if you, only way you could get that tax stamp is through the federal government. And if you apply to the federal government for that tax stamp, you are now self-incriminating yourself because now you're telling the federal government you smoke marijuana and it's illegal. So it was a catch-22 and not a lot of people got those stamps and more people would get in trouble now for marijuana because now it was a class like the worst drugs on the list. It was thrown into that class and that was in 1969 under a tax code where marijuana became illegal. That was another important part to this movie here. That's the reason they were here in the first place. They were here for weed. They were over here for weed. They were growing weed over here. The bikers were growing weed. They were cultivating weed and they were selling it because if you look back in history, this was the best time to have weed. Because in June, after, after Nixon made it illegal, at the beginning of the year, there was no weed by June. You can look it up. They were, they were doing articles on people that were actually looking for weed. They were going to New York City. They were going all over the place. They couldn't find weed anywhere. Nixon had strangled it that much. And now he was coming in for the last death blow on weed. That program was called Operation Intercept. And it was what it was designed to do is now they were going to, because there's no weed in the United States, people were trying to find it and they couldn't find it. And now they're going to the Mexican border because they said they were the ones that were supplying the United States with the weed. And they were going to put a stranglehold on this Mexican border. And it was starting on September 11th in 1969 was the day they were going to do it. That's actually the day they did it. Look it up. They caused a lot of chaos at the border and Mexico hated us probably ever since. But it was a war on marijuana, a war on crime, is the reason that they were at Spawn Ranch in the first place. They're, they were looking for marijuana. They were looking for weed. And they, they found, they found, they said they found weed there. They said they found weed there that was booby trapped. So I don't know if they actually found weed or not because they never showed any weed. But then again, they never really arrested anybody. Was they really planning on arresting anybody? This was a training film. This was to bring all the crap in that we got. Now we got, we got females in the sheriff's department. Let's bring them in. Um, we've got helicopters, let's bring them in. Got our own special weapons and tactical unit in the sheriff's department, let's bring them in. If you don't know what that is, that's SWAT. 
they brought all these dudes in. And that's why you see all kinds of uniforms there. They brought motorcycle cops in. They brought every single person in because this was a training film. So later on, they could show people that were just coming into the sheriff's department, you know, this is how that you operate, you know? You don't pull the guy's handcuffs up over his head like this. Come on now, some of these pictures in this thing, do they look real to you? I'm not saying any of the Manson family was going along with it. They weren't going along with it. They weren't paid actors in this shit. They were actors in this shit, but they had no clue they were actors in this shit. They had none at all. They had no idea that this was a training film, and who cares if the warrant's on the wrong day anyway? Because that was just all part of the training anyway. Here's how we do it. We go to get a warrant from a judge. Okay, we got the warrant. Now we're going back, and all, all the stuff ain't done yet, so we'll wait for this part because it's just a movie. We're not really going to bust these people. Okay, we're going to arrest them all and take them all to jail, but we know the warrant's bad, so they're going to get let out. All a movie. All a movie by design, if you ask me. The way it looks from start to finish, it looks like they just didn't care about who they were, who they were arresting. What they were, all they cared about is showing all the tactical shit now that they had to come in and get crime. And it, out of all these people in this whole movie, they picked Manson out as like the main character in it for whatever reason, because he was in their notes. He was the guy that was picking up hitchhikers. That's all he was doing. He wasn't the biker that was cutting up cars and making them into dune buggies, or the bikers who were supposedly growing weed here. And he was none of those people. So why did he become the main character of their film? It's just it, the whole thing. If you look at the whole thing, it, it, and you can't really see the film, but there is a film. There actually is a movie. I talked to a guy at the sheriff's department. I've talked to lots of people, lots of people. And I talked to one of the guys, in, uh, a guy in the sheriff's department one time who told me this. He says when he came into this, he wasn't, you know, it wasn't when he came into the sheriff's department, but when he was in the sheriff's department, people that would come into the sheriff's department new in the 70s, would, they would show him this film as a training film on how, how you do and don't do things on a, on, on a raid, you know? And I, I thought, wow, that's amazing that they made this into a training film. He's like, no, it was always supposed to be a training film. Huh? It was? He didn't know where to find the film. He didn't know anything else. But that's the information that he told me. It was, it was designed to be a training film. That's what they were headed there to do. They weren't looking for anybody special. They didn't really even care. They were taking notes of all this shit. And if you look, later there was a guy by the name of... Um, I think his name was Richard Craig. He did an article about this operation that uh, Nixon had going on. It really wasn't to catch any drugs. It was just to emphasize the fact to the people out there, hey, we're being tough on crime. We're being really tough on crime now. The sheriff that told me that this was just a movie. It was just a training film. Okay. Cool. Gave me a lot to think about there. And then, you know, I've talked, to, like I said, I've talked to plenty of other sheriffs along the way. And I've even bought some of their stuff. Some of their stuff along the way that they used during the investigation. I bought. Why not? I collect things. I'll show you a piece that I've got from the federal government. This was actually... When J. Edgar Hoover was still running the FBI, and these are papers from the FBI on Manson's official arrest records. It shows all the time he got arrested, all the times the FBI knew about it anyway. And the FBI knows a lot more than a lot of people know. They know way more information than you about yourself. And there's something interesting on page one here. On page one of Manson's rap sheet that they got from the FBI, and it came on September and uh, September the 30th in 1969. That one was on a stamp downtown. And some of the people's names, Gleason's a popular name that you see on there, so he was probably touching these papers at one point. Um, there's interesting notes in the top, though. The top notes say, refer motorcycle file and then it gives the number a case file for the motorcycle the motorcycle file refer to the motorcycle file that's interesting doesn't make any sense but it's interesting and then they've got it over here too 606 606 m up in the corner 606 is what the motorcycle file is 606 so they're really referring you here man 
The FBI is saying, refer to the motorcycle file. Well, what the hell are they talking about? This file, C897606. Okay? It means absolutely shit, right? Well, it means that there's something that nobody's ever told us. And it shows on his rap sheet here that he was arrested on 8-16-69. That was the day of the movie. The day of the missed Mark warrant, you know? The day they let him out. They let him out and they let him go. Then the next thing we hear in the story is Shorty gets killed and then they take off to Death Valley. But was that the whole scenario? Because on this rap sheet it shows Manson got arrested again. He got arrested again on 824. And he got arrested where? At Spawn Ranch. And what did he get arrested for? Planning, cultivation, and possession of marijuana. Just what they were looking for there. He got busted for. But, this is where the, the notes on the front page from the FBI come in handy. It's crossed out. Now there's a new case number on this. Manson's case number where he got arrested for cultivating and possession of marijuana and planning it. Had a case number of 616 at the end, and now this has a case number of 606. They changed the case. And they now handed it off, that off to the bikers. But did the bikers ever get convicted of growing marijuana and cultivating and planting over at Spawn Ranch? I don't think so ever. They just erased that too. Why did they erase that? Why do they erase that? Why do they erase that completely from the record? It seems something... So, if you look back on that film, and you see that Manson was arrested again, like a week later, on August the 24th, two days before Shorty died, did Shorty get killed because they found out that they were growing weed over there? Is that why Shorty didn't want him over there? Because he was afraid that was illegal now, and he was a fan of the President of the United States? Who knows? But it adds something to the story because I've never heard of Manson getting arrested for cultivating marijuana a week after the raids. A week after the raids, it's always been, Shorty got killed, they took off. That wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. And the whole Spawn Ranch raid was never a raid. All it was was a training exercise that was actually filmed and used in training. What else have we got confused on this thing? Why did they let Manson out after they caught him with the marijuana then? You know, I'm sure that they had a proper warrant when they went back the second time. Why did they let him go? Why have you never heard of that? Did they need Manson as, you know, again, I'm sure the police department's touting this information back to the federal government. Look what we're doing with all this money you're giving us. We're doing this. Did Manson look like a good scapegoat for something else that was planned down along the line? Who knows? No, it opens up my mind. I wish I knew. But then again, I'm glad I don't. Because, again, it opens up your mind for so many different other things. Like, if they would just take all the things in that Manson film and add them to a Nixon, a Nixon um, propaganda ad to get elected back in 1968, it all fits together so perfectly. Because <laughs> it was just a movie. Peace. crime in this country has grown nine times as fast as population. At the current rate, the crimes of violence in America will double by 1972. We cannot accept that kind of future for America. We owe it to the decent and law-abiding citizens of America to take the offensive against the criminal forces that threaten their peace and their security, and to rebuild respect for law across this country. I pledge to you, the wave of crime is not going to be the wave of the future in America. Think about it. Who is the one man who has the experience and the qualities?
qualifications to lead America in these troubled, dangerous times. Nixon.